Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday everyone, wherever you are, we are watching you check in and thank you so much to everyone who's here right now. If you're here, this is our live hang following our little video premiere of how to needle felt bowls, which is really a fun and easy process. So thank you for being here. Today we're going to chat about that video and the last couple of videos. We're going to have some BFF shares, some of the things that you all have made that we are just crushing on, and we'll answer any questions and talk about whatever you'd like to talk about around these things. So thank you for being here. And hey, there's always prizes to give away. The team have already lined up some prizes for me. And I think those are from people who've commented on the previous videos. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So uh, hi to some friends. Hi to Linda Reeder, JJ Packer, Susan Cunningham. Thank you all for joining us. Hi to Alice, Tammy, Devin is here. That's awesome. Lisa Bradford's here. Uh, Marlene Coaster, Karen Cott, um, Jan Scott I saw earlier as well. Susan Pruitt, Andrew Webster. Thank you everyone for joining us for today's live hang. Can't wait to hear from you and hear what you have to say. Um, the fairies have been working so much. We're starting to enjoy summer here. They're putting together lots of new things that I know you're going to be excited about and we look forward to sharing them with you. But we have our fairy in the field with the funny for us for today, the very funny fairy Kayla. <laughs> Wait a second. Who we'll let you guys in here? I wasn't expecting you for another hour. You're so early. I'm still getting ready. Well, happy Wooly Wednesday. <laughs> oh, gosh. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. I won't keep you in suspense since you're so early. <laughs> I got a great joke for you today. Fancy paper here. What kind of cats like to bowl? What kind of cats like to bowl? Alley cats. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got to finish getting ready. <laughs> Have a great one, guys. <laughs> Oh, I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> George's laughing. I'm watching I, people all over the place communicating to me right now. Hi, y'all. Thanks for being here. So if you've just tuned in, we are Living Felt based in Central Texas. We are also feltingtutorials.com. Uh, we want to share everything that's going on with those uh, with you today and also chat about our recent videos. So we just shared our premiere for Needle Felting a Bowl. I'm looking forward to your questions and feedback on that. And I know Jordan's ha has queued some up, so join us, grab a beverage, grab a snack. I'm gonna pull up my chair and let's hear what questions do we have, Jordan, about this little tutorial we share. Well, they absolutely love the little nesting bowls. Um, so a few people were asking about the muslin fabric that you used uh, to cover the mold. Um, okay, yeah. so the muslin fabric, I buy it by the bolt because I like to use it in lots of different craft projects. But in my earliest time I bought it was like in the fabric section of Hobby Lobby, even Walmart. And you're just looking for, it's like a cheap, natural looking fabric. The reason I like something with a slightly open weave is that it's not so tight that the needle wants to bounce off of it and not something so open that's just gonna grab onto all that fiber. So if all you have is quilters cotton, give it a go, but don't go more dense into something like canvas or denim because it's not going to fold as gracefully as you need and you know if all you have is an old pillowcase that you want to chop up well try that too really the whole thing is that the fabric acts um, as a inner barrier and also gives you a handle that you can pull on to remove that mold from the shape so that's the that's the real key there is it's giving you a handle and something to keep the wool from fully binding to the wool mold beneath that you made Donna asks, can you use like a knit fabric for that, like a sock? I don't know. You might try that. I, you know, it didn't occur to me to use a knit fabric, honestly, Donna, but it's worth giving it a go. I mean, why not? Yeah, give it a go. <laughs> See if it works for you. Sure. Good idea. I honestly didn't even occur to me to use a sock. Good, good thinking. You might try it. 
So uh, Susan says the fiber doesn't stick to the mold as your needle felting. You know what, Susan? We're using a very fine, uh, all the felting needles I used in this project were very fine when we had the mold in place for a particular reason. And um, initially we're lightly tacking it onto the mold just so that it holds in place and the key is that if you recall in the very first layer we barely tacked it in place to hold on to the mold so that we could get more wool on there and since we continue to use fine needles we're just trying to bind fiber to fiber now this process is the same process that we use with our um, hat forms these are needle felting hat form which we've also used to make vessels and bowls some of you have seen the pumpkin bowl that we pull out in the fall and draw names from that was made over our smallest hat form this is a, a larger one so the idea is that you needle felt the fiber you peel it off and remove it and needle felt it again and what you'll start to notice is that after those first layers you're really just using this as a form to bounce off of and your needle is not going all the way through to the mold anymore so only initially you're lightly tacking it down after that you're really focusing on fiber to fiber that's why the fine needles and the shallow pokes um, so Karen asked, can you use this styrofoam ball as a mold? And I know that um, many years ago I tried to use styrofoam for needle felting Easter eggs because it seemed like the way to, you know, guarantee the shape. But what I found is that when you put styrofoam in the middle, what happens is the fiber is kind of being stapled to the styrofoam but doesn't have the ability to do its crimping curling like when it just binds to itself so that true entanglement doesn't happen and we're kind of tacking the fiber to the styrofoam the other thing is styrofoam tends to break up over time even if it's under that fabric it's going to kind of break up so rather than that if you use wool you're going to be able to use it over and over without it breaking and you can just change your fabric if you need to so I would stick with fiber if you can so Karen we answered Karen's question yes you can reuse the mold over and over it'll it might get a little fuzzy but its job is just to you know be a shape against which we needle felt so that's okay um, okay Anything else on the bowls question or on the bowls uh, tutorial? Just some comments. People are saying they'll, they're will they looking forward to decorating the bowls and they appreciate the gram weights that we shared. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> and Marlene says she was felting a ball for her snowman while watching the video. And now the ball is now my first bowl mold. <laughs> I, I love it. That's so fun. Okay, so that is a fun little process. I know that there's lots of things you can make from this idea. And we look forward to seeing what these little bowls birth in your studio. So make sure you share them in our group Living Felt Friends on Facebook. And you're always welcome to share them with us as well on our contact page. We'd love to see what you guys are up to. Very cool. Um, so what else? Do we want to do some show and tells? We brought along some show and tells. The team is so fabulous at gathering together some of the things you've made. And I think what Jordan has prepared for us first is a little slideshow of some wafitas from an earlier tutorial this spring. Some cute pastel ones. <laughs> I love those fabric wings. I love how she broke up the wings there. Different varieties. So cute. A little lace wing too. <laughs> Clever. And layered wings. Darling. Oh, so cute. What great colors together, right? The purple and the green. I love it. I love the tail, too. <laughs> <laughs> she also clever. made this one. I think it was Mrs. Rhinestone or something was the name. That's fantastic. <laughs> Lace and rhinestones. What a great combination. Got these little ones by Carrie Logan. Those are so cute. That deck is precious, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so fancy. Pretty colors there. Yes, we did our fabric beaks this year. That was new. That was really fun. And oh, great, some little um, 
sticks. So I forget what we called them. Stems? Yeah, plant stakes. What, yeah, plant stakes. Yeah. Stakes was evading me. Those are darling. Great use of contrasting colors there in the in the blue and orange. Those are really fun. So wafitas or waffa birds is a fun project if you want to give it a try. There's obviously no rules as you can see by uh, what we've shared already and we love seeing what you all are making for sure. Okay, and are we gonna share some more stuff, Jordan? Sure, we have some butterflies and a few mixed media. Yeah, let's look at those, see what you guys have been up to. So we shared butterflies. This is a great monarch uh, style by Gail. We also have a monarch kit for doing a 2D monarch if you're interested in giving it a go. And I love this one by Helen Elizabeth. What a beautiful job she's done on this butterfly. And this one is directly from our uh, monarch kit, I believe. That is so pretty. Yeah, you can just take the monarch or follow the, the monarch in the kit and then use it in a picture, which we've seen a couple of people do. So fabulous. Really, the kit teaches you to blend. This is a great little mixed media project by our friend Joanne, who also makes our living felt mugs. And a little, I love this. I love that she's just used her handmade felt as the background for her little clay creations. So sweet. The sun so loved the moon that he would die every night so she could breathe. And I can't read the other part. What I wouldn't give for a love like oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. Those are precious. We love seeing what y'all are making. It always really makes our day. So thank you so much for sharing those. Um, we also, what are we looking up? Are we have more questions? We have some questions on the okay. alpaca video that we recently shared. On the alpaca video. So we shared a video earlier, a couple of weeks back, where we went to the local alpaca farm and uh, we'll be going back there as well. So Richmond Socho asks, can you blend the alpaca with other wools? And the answer to that is yes. Personally, uh, what I find is the most successful is when you blend similar, similar fiber processes. So um, this alpaca is fairly straight. You could blend it with another fiber that was a little more straight, or you could potentially hand cart it with something else that is short, or you could cut longer staple fibers, fibers to blend it for sure. So yes, you can blend it with other fibers. Just work in small amounts and make little samples to see what you like. Uh, Nanda Duin says, uh, I have some alpaca fleece, not very well shaved, so most of it's loose and short locks. I was wondering, can you pre-felt alpaca like wool? And I would say yes, make yourself a small pre-felt. Anytime you're making a test, just start really small. Think of like making an eight by eight and try making a pre-felt of that. Get a feeling of how long it takes, like how many rolls it takes to get something that's just holding together. And then of course it really depends on what the end use is, you know, what you want to do with it. But sure, give it a try and make yourself a nice little pre-felt. I think that's a great idea. Is this the same? Do we know who asked this question? Uh, I actually don't. I think this one came from the Facebook group. Okay, so this question was extracted. We don't know who asked the question, but they asked, how do you prepare alpaca fiber for the drum carter? I have skirted and washed the fiber, but it has too much veggie matter in it. Does the fiber need to go through the picker before the drum carter, or is there another way to do it? So here's the thing with the alpaca fiber. Um, if it has a lot of vegetable matter in it, I would pick out all the large pieces that you can and try and do that before you wash it when possible. After it's been washed, if you don't have a picker, and most of us don't, by the way, pickers are you know kind of beastie things, what you can do is just separate the locks into um, you know separate them and let the vegetable matter fall out before you cart it. With your drum carter, some of the veggie matter is going to fall out below, so you could also try carting it a couple of times. But I would hand pick it, and you can also use a flick carter to, if you need to, open the locks more. A flick carter is like a single mini hand card with a long handle, and if you flick out those fibers, then you'll loosen it up and more of the veggie matter would fall out. So I would just be picking or opening the fiber by hand over something to catch all that fiber. And we do, uh, we have talked about working with the fiber and showing y'all a little bit more about working with fiber. So we're still working on that for sure. That might be fun. Um, Kay says, I, when I watched the alpaca farm video, did you mention the alpaca fiber is allergy friendly? 
And what we find is a lot of people that, honestly, some people report allergies to wool. For some people, they're not really allergic to the wool, they're allergic to the chemicals that they're processed with. But for people who are actually allergic to wool fiber, most people that of those same people are not allergic to the alpaca fiber. It doesn't have the same qualities and it doesn't have the lanolin. So it tends to be for people who are allergic to wool, they find that they're not allergic to alpaca. So you might give it a try if that's an issue for you. What, do you, what else do you got, Jordan? I think that's it for the alpacas, oh, but okay. I, I have a little sneaky clip of uh, when we're going back for the shearing. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's a glimpse of what's coming up with for more alpaca fun. <laughs> we went to the farm while they were being shorn, and it was definitely interesting, and we'll be sharing more about that with you. They are such sweet little guys, but I have to tell you, they, they don't really love being sheared. <laughs> they don't, but they were very good, and they all complied, and they all got their little haircuts this year. So we'll be sharing that with you, as well as how cute they look after they've been shaved. So more alpaca fun coming up this year. And if you missed that, that was our, what was the video called, Jordan? It was just alpaca farm. Alpaca ranch tour or something alpaca like that. Alpaca ranch tour, yeah. Anyway, we shared it just, just a few weeks back, and it was a, it was a fun little visit. Um, Meredith asks about the alpaca fiber and says they're beautiful. Um, how are their properties for dyeing? And I would say, you know, most of the, the fleeces we've been getting are darker. I do have some light alpaca as well. But you can dye it also with the acid dyes just like you do the wool because it's a protein fiber. So it will absolutely take dye well as well. So go with, the, go with acid dyes for your alpaca fiber if you want to give it a try. Cool. Jan Scott shared that for fiber prep, check to see if you have a local spinning guild and they should be able to offer some good help. Oh, that's nice. Very good. Good idea, Jan. Thank you. Okay, what do we want to tackle next? Oh, we want to do, so we want to give you, or is it, you have that queued up? I do. Okay, so we have some fun things coming up for you this summer, lots more in the queue, and Jordan has prepared a little teaser of why you might want to subscribe and make sure you get our next video. A lot of you have enjoyed the studio tours and the fiber organization, so we have more for you on that. <laughs> We'll be visiting Natasha Smart Studio over in England, in this seaside town. <laughs> Some of you might know Natasha Smart. She is a really big deal on Instagram and a pretty big deal in our school, FeltingTutorials.com, where she came and taught us how to wet felt a backpack over our big Bertha ball. We'll take you to her studio in the UK and you'll get to learn more about how she stores her fibers and organizes things and see a little insight of where she lives as well. So we are excited to bring that to you and I hope that you'll stay tuned and check out more um, videos that we have coming up this summer. So fun. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, other questions? Do y'all have other questions from other things that we've done? Uh, people are very excited about visiting with Natasha. Oh, and seeing all the things in her studio. Yeah, super fun to visit her studio. Absolutely. Pate Palsu says her dog has the same expression that the alpacas do when they get trimmed. <laughs> <laughs> So fun. Well, I know that we have some alpaca related uh, BFF makes and it looks like there's a whole ton of them. So here we go, y'all. <laughs> Cherie Davidson is sharing. I've only seen half the screen here. What is Cherie she, sharing? Oh. Is, that a, is that a fiber art bat? It is. It's an art bat mixed with a merino top and alpaca. Fun colors in that one. Uh, one second. Here we go. <laughs> oh, Sweet Little Bunny by Cheryl. That's darling. This is a uh, I um Emmy. This yeah. is Emmy is our friend in Japan happens to actually be a friend of my husband. Her oh, husband. Yeah. We're sweet. friends. Yep. She sent me fabric and we've sent her fiber. She is beautiful cats. I love these solid color projects. Very interesting. This is a memorial sculpture of Lucy and she said she's made it a few different times, mm. but she made it with alpaca on yeah. this one. Yeah. <laughs> so sweet. Thank you Emmy for sending that in. Oh, that's quite stunning, isn't it? This is, uh, a, due to Facebook, one of the first things Helen Elizabeth wet felted was an alpaca background, and then she needle felted onto it. 
<laughs> That's beautiful, that really sepia finish with the black, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. A few little critters made by Irene Clark with alpaca all in the top coats. We have a few critters made by Irene here <laughs> in the studio. These are lovely, Irene. Just darling. Oh, so cute. <laughs> and an alpaca for you. I can't see the name there. Jalen Morehouse. Very nice. So cute. <laughs> Judy. <laughs> so on the right is a uh, granite, an alpaca that Judy knows. And uh, they sh when they sheared a granite, he, she took some of the fiber and made a mini version of them. <laughs> that is darling. What a great idea. So cute. Hamish, the Scottish Highland steer. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly's been here for classes in the past, so sweet to see. Hamish, that's a good name for him. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. Kaylee, a lovely flower. So you can wet felt with it. You can needle felt with it. You can blend it with other fibers. It's just fantastic. Sometimes alpaca looks a little furry or a little hairy. This is by Patricia, who lives here in Texas. We've also worked together in person. So cute. <laughs> I love the locks. It looks so, uh, I, so much like hair. <laughs> I know. It's fantastic. So pretty, I can't see the name on it. Uh, Patricia Roberts Thompson. Oh, very nice, Patricia. Lovely little set. Alpaca can be very soft. So some is gonna be a little more coarse and hair-like, but some things are gonna be very soft next to the skin. So a nice, fine alpaca uh, is can be great for this as well. People love making hats with it. Oh, Rochelle, these are adorable, aren't they? <laughs> I love the little baby one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are cute. Fantastic little bunnies. Some very dedicated fur application here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes time, that's for sure. Well done, <laughs> looks beautiful. And nothing like those natural fibers is one of the things we really like about it are the natural colors that it comes in and because people often don't let their, these are wakaya alpacas, people often don't let them get very long. And so you get that nice variegation right within the staple length of the fiber. So it's pretty and we'll be sharing our processed alpaca as well uh, and sharing more about that in the future. What do you got there for Joyce? We've got another, what else do we have A here? few more questions about the needle felted bowls. Okay. Uh, so how would you approach putting a flat bottom on the bowl? Back to the bowls. Um, if you want your bowl to have a flat bottom, if you, the thing is, is I would have built a flat bottom bowl so a little more shape like this. So if you make your mold with a flat bottom and you make it a little more like this shape, it's going to be easier to make it flat, uh, keep it flat that way. Then to have an outside flat and an inside round, that's a little more of a challenge. And hard, hard square edges are a little more of a challenge also. But if you start with your, your mold with a flat bottom, that will really help you out a lot. Um, uh, Rich Manchado or Richmond, Richmond or Rich Manchado? Richmond Man Shosho. Show show. Richmond Shosho wants to know, <laughs> can you wet felt a finish over the needle felted bowl? Absolutely. Our wet felting a hat kit, and our which could also be a vessel kit, our wet felting a purse kit, we encourage doing a wet felted finish. A wet felted finish is really just going to provide a further mat to those surface layers. I do find now, I have needle felted and wet felted a lot of things over the years, and I do find that when you needle felt this shape first like this, it tends to be more dense and more lofty than if you had just wet felted it in the first place. So expect it not to get as flat as something that was 100% wet felted. But you can uh, wet felt a sheen over it, and with this, you could either put the mold in a plastic bag and then wet felt with this over the mold to, to completely keep the shape. That's one way to do it. And the other way is to wet it, flatten it, and wet felt it just like normal. But you're gonna wanna really manage it so that it doesn't misshape it on you. Rinse out all of the soap every time. Otherwise that soap wants to break down your fiber over time. They don't really match in the pH. So you will always wanna make sure you rinse out all of your soap for sure. A cool. uh, quick last minute question from Donna asks, uh, how do you measure your head for the hat to, me to choose the hat form? How do you uh, measure? You're going to measure around and on the hat form page, there is a guide. So you're going to measure for the, the measurements we take for the hat are right around here. So you're going to go like around this part to here to find your hat size. 
go there. But I tell you, there's flexibility there. So most adults are going to use our large or a medium. And if you go with a large, there's there's a chance if you're using a fine fiber that you're depending on the fineness of the fiber that you could shrink it down a little more. Um, but so measure your hat around there to choose your hat form size. Okay. And you have one more for us, Jordan. Uh, we have a little density spot because we heard so many times Marie saying how, how important it is to have a dense mold to make the ball over. So we put together a little couple few methods to test your density. When you hold your forefinger and your thumb together and press at the base of your thumb, it's kind of squishy and that would represent a rare cooked meat or an undone needle felted shape. Your middle finger and your thumb together is a little more firm, but it's medium. Your ring finger and your thumb together would be well done and your pinky and your thumb together, very well done. So notice how the density in that part of your thumb changes depending on the finger that's touching your thumb. Jordan, our videographer, showed me another way to test pounds of pressure. Put your shape onto a scale and press down on it. With our very well done shapes, we are able to put 10 pounds of pressure on the shape without it distorting. With our medium or rare pieces, we only got away with about two or three pounds before the shape was distorting. So this might be another way to measure the density of your needle felted shapes. So I really appreciated bringing in the scale because Jordan and I were in the studio here together and I said, how I wish, I wish we could come up with a pounds per pressure. And she's like, I know how to do this. And so that's how that came about. I totally appreciated that. And this technique, as I always share, came from my husband. So there's a couple of ways you can assess the density. It could be as dense, whatever you're trying to make, as dense as you want it. But those would give you some markers uh, to look at, to consider when you're evaluating the density of your pieces. So I really liked that. Cool. All right. So this has been fun. We thank you all so much for hanging out with us. We're going to give away some prizes from, yeah. from this bowl. What are we giving away, Jordan? So our prizes are, oh, you so can funny. either get the clover pen tool, you can get three oh. needle tubes, or you can get a eight by eight. And what is that? A three by three? How big is that small? Five wow. by five. Five by okay. five. Wow. Man. So here are the, here are the prizes we're giving away today, picked out by the fairies. So they're giving you three packs of needles. Looks like um, 38 star spiral, love it. 42 triangle, you know I love that one. And a 40 spiral, fantastic needle. So three needle tubes or a uh, clover uh, pen tool, which I love and used in this video. So a nine by nine and a five by five. And I keep multiple sizes in my studio, that's for sure. So we're gonna draw three names right now and uh, you get to choose which prize you want. Now, if you are not in our database, meaning uh, you've never ordered anything from us, not even a download, then reach out to us on the contact us page and say, I'm a winner. So I'm gonna pull here, Jordan, the first three names that I grabbed. Here we go. Are you ready? All right. Okay, here we go. Here's that. Cross I your have, fingers, everybody. Okay, I have the, the prize winners right here. The first one is Tammy Mutton. Ooh. Congratulations. And we have Grace Finnegan, congratulations to you, and Monica Drury, right on, y'all. So congratulations to our winners. Jordan, tell them how they win prizes. You win prizes because you commented on these YouTube videos or you've asked questions during the live chat. So we gather all those names and we put them into a big old pile for Marie to pick from. So make sure you comment if you liked the bowl video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below from the video. And next week we'll be back with another tutorial. This one's going to be needle felting in 2D. After that, we have our Natasha. Natasha Smart video, and we have more in the queue ready for you. Now we have a wet felting project coming up, right? Mm -hmm. A really super fun surprise. Yay. <laughs> don't tell me yet, Marie. Yeah, okay. I'm not going <laughs> to tell you, but you're going to love this project. Even if you don't wet felt, I bet you're going to be enticed to wet felt. I can't wait to share that with you. We hope to see you in our group, Living Felt Friends. I want to tell you two things real quick. If you're looking for deals, go to our page, uh, Fairy Special Deals, livingfelt.com. Look at the top, Fairy Special Deals. We're posting our new deals every week. You can also get the newsletter. We'll always send them to you and let you know what's happening. But for just 
a couple of more days, all wet felting classes in the school, feltingtutorials.com, are only 39 bucks. We have Whoa. never done sales this cheap, so go grab your classes and we'll see you all next time. Have a great rest of your week, y'all. Thank you so much. Bye.